What's up everyone? Sam here from bitebybite.com and in this video I want to talk about how to become asymmetrical in your interviews so that you can maximize the upside all while minimizing the downside and get the best chance of landing that dream job. So stick around and I'll talk about that in a sec. All right, so in this video, as I mentioned, I want to talk about becoming asymmetrical in your interviews. And I think this is a really interesting concept that I've never heard anyone talk about before. So I really want to dig in and show you some strategies that you can use to become asymmetrical and get the best results from your interviews. And so first I want to give an example so that you can see what I mean by asymmetrical, because this is not something that people usually talk about. So think about financial investing for a second. Like think about investing in the stock market. When you invest in the stock market, you buy a piece of stock and either the price goes up or the price goes down, right? And so if the price goes up, you make money. And if the price goes down, you lose money. Pretty simple. And the question becomes, is there a way that we can minimize our downside in investing while maximizing the upside? Because let's say that I offered you two investments. In this investment, you can buy it for $50 and you'll either end up with $100 at the end or $0 at the end. And otherwise, that's investment A, and then investment B, I'll offer you for $50, and you either end up at the end with $50, or you end up with $100. Like, which would you choose? You'd pretty obviously choose the second one, right? Because you have no downside, and the only possibility is that you either end up with what you started, or you end up with double your money. And this sounds crazy, right? It sounds like how could this even be possible? But to give you a specific example of this, there's a great example of, I forget the investor's name, but he bought up about $20 million worth of nickels. And you might be like, why would you buy $20 million worth of nickels? But the reasoning behind this was that the value of a nickel, as long as the US Treasury keeps accepting nickels, it's never going to go below five cents. Right, so you buy $20 million worth of nickels, you always have at least $20 million worth of value unless the US Treasury goes away or stops accepting nickels. But on the flip side, the metal in the nickels themselves could actually be worth more than five cents. And so as, the, as there is currency inflation and other sorts of things, the value of those nickels in terms of just the metal in them might actually go up beyond five cents. And so you have this upside with no potential downside. And so that's what I mean by having an asymmetrical relationship and an asymmetrical risk reward. And so now I want to talk about what does this mean for us in our interviews and how do we apply this? And to do that, I want you to think for a second about how most people approach their interviews. So when most people approach their interviews, they go into the interview with the mindset of, I'm going to look at the problem and I'm going to either come up with a solution or I'm not, right? There's not really a plan behind it. It's more of a like, I'm going to just look at the problem and hope that I come up with a solution. And this basically sets up like a binary success or failure, right? It's like I either recognize the problem, I've seen it before, or I can, you know, come up with a solution on the fly. That would be the success or the failure is I'm not able to figure out this problem. And so when you go into an interview with that mindset, there's no gray area in the middle. It's either you solve the problem or you don't. And what this means is that you're setting up this binary where it's like it's either pure success or pure failure and there's nothing in the middle. And so there's no wiggle room if you are a little bit stuck or like if you have a strategy, there's no wiggle room in this case where it's like you only succeed or fail. And so what I want to talk about is how we can actually avoid having such a binary and how we can limit the downside in our interviews while maximizing the upside. And I want to give you three specific strategies for that. And so the first strategy that I want to talk about is actually making sure that you do have a strategy for your interviews, right? Because most people go in and it's like, did I memorize this problem? Do I recognize a solution? And if I do great, and if not, I'm screwed. And so if you have a strategy that you can apply consistently to any problem that you see, then you always have something that works, right? You always have something, some sort of framework that you can follow, even if you've never seen the problem before. And that's like crucial because having that framework is going to allow you to make a lot more progress than you will otherwise. And so to give you an example of this framework, one framework, and I'll put this in the cards in the sidebar that we talk about a lot is the fast method. 
And the FAST method is a method that I came up with for solving dynamic programming problems. And the way that it works is it gives you a four-step process to follow anytime you see a dynamic programming problem. So it doesn't matter if you've seen the problem before. It doesn't matter if you like immediately see a solution. All you have to do is just follow the steps of the process. So it's like you find a recursive solution, you find that first brute force solution, then you analyze that solution. And you can check out our free ebook on the FAST method and I go through all of this in a lot of detail. But you can, you analyze the solution, then you find that, you like memoize that initial solution, and then you find a bottom up solution. And this is sort of the approach that you take when you go through the FAST method. And by having that, it applies no matter what the problem is. And so you just work your way through the problem. And you always know that like, even if I didn't do as well as I could have done in this interview, even if I wasn't like super fast at coming up with the solution, and even if I stumbled a little bit, I'm still gonna get there and I still have a process that I can follow that will be consistent every time. And so having a strategy is so, so important in your interviews. And I would encourage you to, as you go through problems, try and identify what are the commonalities between those different problems. Because if you can identify those commonalities, then you are going to be much, much more prepared and in seeing like what are the what are the commonalities and what is that like consistent strategy that I can follow every time I go through a problem. And so number one, have a strategy. Number two, find a brute force solution to every problem you solve in your interviews. And this is such an important point. And I've talked about this before, but I want to reiterate it because I still do mock interviews with people all the time who don't do this. And finding a brute force solution to your problem is so valuable because that establishes a baseline for you, right? That sets the minimum success that you can have. If you can find a brute force solution, it's not optimal, it may not be the best solution, but you're never gonna end up with not having a solution at all. And pretty much every problem, if you look hard enough and if you think about it, you can find a brute force solution without too, too much work, right? Like the brute force solutions, at the easiest level, we can just think through like, how would I solve this problem by hand and then apply that or just, you know, find all possible out puts and then see or outcomes and see which is the which gives us the best result like there are a lot of basic strategies we can use for finding that brute force solution but if you have a brute force solution then you're establishing this baseline where you're always going to have some solution so remember it's not about always doing perfectly it's about limiting the downside and I'll tell you for a fact as an interviewer that there are times when I've passed people on to the next round of the interviews who just found a brute force solution to the problem. So it's not like by not having a brute force solution or by not having an optimal solution, you're guaranteed to be screwed. You might actually have success if you just find the brute force solution. And this is why establishing that like, you know, lower bound on our, you know, the quality of our answer essentially and by minimizing that downside is so, so important. And so number one was finding a strategy. Number two, starting with that brute force solution. And number three, that is something that a lot of people don't think about, but is focus on the most, the most common topics that you're actually gonna see in your interview. So one thing that I see come up a ton is that people will spend all this time focusing on topics that are not likely to come up in their interview. And a perfect example of this is something like bit manipulation or you know even system design to agree a degree like you're not likely to see very many system design interviews uh even if you're an experienced engineer the chances of you seeing more than one in an interview are fairly low and so what we found actually at bite by bite we did some research and we found that the most common questions that you're going to be asked are string and array problems tree and graph problems and dp and recursion problems so if you just focused on those and nothing else, you're really covering a lot of ground and you're making so much more progress by doing that than you are by getting into all these nitty gritty little things. Like unless you're applying for a machine learning job, you should not be studying things like A star search, for example. Like we tend to get so nitty gritty because there are things we don't understand, but then we miss the bigger picture. And so like you'd be way better off spending more time on like strings and arrays than you would on some weird machine learning thing. And so with these three strategies, what this is gonna allow you to do is it's gonna allow you to minimize the potential downside in your interview. And what I mean by this is you're really going to establish like a foundation where it's like, I may not do great, but I'm at least gonna do like mediocre. 
And even though that doesn't really sound that good when I say it that way, imagine that as the difference between I completely bomb or I do well. Right? We're taking the compl I completely bomb and we're getting rid of that total end of the spectrum and we're shifting everything up. And so by becoming uh, asymmetrical in your interviews, you're going to see a huge difference in how well you do on average through your interviews. So I highly encourage you to apply these strategies and try these out for yourself. And so with that, that's all I got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please, please hit the subscribe button below and I'll link as well to our dynamic programming guide where you can learn about the FAST method, you can study and you can see exactly how to solve all the most common dynamic programming problems. So definitely check that out and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.